Hi students, welcome back. Today's topic is refraction of light. In this video, we will study the introduction, then refraction, laws of refraction, refractive index and principle of reversibility. In class 9, you have studied another property of light that is reflection. In this video, we will focus on refraction. So let's start. Light is vitally important to us. Light arrives on our planet after a speedy trip from the sun. Sun is a nuclear fireball which throws energy in all directions. The light we see is simply one part of the energy that sun makes, which our eyes can detect. The light energy travels in the form of electromagnetic energy waves. Light always travels in a straight line with different speeds in different medium. It travels faster in air than in water. A medium is said to be optically denser if the light slows down in it and it is said to be optically rarer if the light speeds up in it. So we can say like water and glass are optically denser than air and air is optically rarer medium than water and glass. Now light rays travel in straight line through space at approximately 3 into 10 to the power 8 meter per second. As light passes through transparent medium such as water or glass, its speed is decreased. For glass, it is reduced to 200,000 km per second. And for water, the speed is 225,000 km per second. If the light enters into a medium perpendicular to the surface as shown here, and now it enters into the glass, glass is a medium, it passes straight through but at a slow speed. However, if the light beam arrives at a medium surface at an angle, not only its speed will be reduced, but it will bend due to a process called refraction. So, refraction is the change in direction of the path of light when it passes from one medium to another medium. The refraction of light is essentially a surface phenomenon. It occurs at the surface of two boundaries of two medium. So at the boundary separating the two medium, light suffers partial reflection and partial refraction. Let's see, when light travels from one medium to another medium, a small part of it gets reflected in the same medium, obeying the laws of reflection and the rest of it is refracted through the other medium. So there is a partial reflection and partial refraction at the boundary surface as shown in this. You can see a part of light on the above surface which shows that part of it gets reflected and part of it is refracted. Now when the light travels from one medium to another medium, part of it gets reflected into the same medium as you can see here partially refracted ray then part of it enters into the medium or gets refracted. So this is the angle of incidence. I draw a normal or a imaginary line perpendicular to both the medium surface. So the angle of incidence here is I O N. The angle of refraction is represented by the small r. We observe that when a ray of light travels from a rarer medium to denser medium that is from air glass it bends towards the normal as you can see here from air to glass it bends towards the normal and when it travels from denser to rarer like glass to air it bends away from the normal now why does this bending occurs when light travels from one medium to another why does light have to bend towards the normal or away from the normal let's see the reason as the beam of light reaches the surface of the medium, the lower portion enters first and is slowed down. However, the upper portion
portion is still traveling at the speed of light until it arrives the surface and enters. This speed difference at the top and the bottom point of the light path causes it to bend towards the normal. So normal is an imaginary line drawn perpendicular to the surface. That is why there is a bending when light travels from one medium to another medium. Now laws of refraction. The incident ray, the refracted ray and the normal all lie in the same plane. The second one is the ratio of the sine of angle of incidence to the sine of angle of refraction is a constant which is known as refractive index for the light of a given color and for a given pair of media. This law is also known as Snell's law of refraction. This sine i by sine r is equal to constant which is this constant is also known as refractive index of the second medium with respect to the first. Here the second medium is glass. The first medium is air. So I can say sine i by sine r is equal to the refractive index of glass with respect to air and it is represented by English letter n or a Greek letter mu. So refractive index of a second medium with respect to the first medium is defined as the ratio of sine of angle of incidence to the sine of angle of refraction. All transparent mediums have different refractive index. This is the speed that light travels in a medium compared to the light traveling in a vacuum. For example, glass has refractive index of 1.33. This is calculated by dividing the speed of light in vacuum by the speed of light in glass. So calculating it, we get the refractive index of glass as 1.33. And how we can calculate refractive index speed of light in air by speed of light in the medium. Any time a light ray travels from a medium with low refractive index like air to a medium with high refractive index like glass, the light ray will bend towards the normal. Likewise, when the light ray exists at this point, what happens? Exist from high refractive index to a medium with low refractive index like from glass to air, the process is reversed. The bottom portion of the light beam exists first and resumes out the speed of light while the top portion still at the speed determined by the medium. This causes the beam to bend away from the normal line. Let's see what is lateral displacement. Lateral displacement as we can see here, lateral displacement is the perpendicular distance. It is marked here by D. It is the distance, perpendicular distance between the path of emergent ray. This is the emergent ray and the direction of incident ray. The lateral displacement depends upon three quantities. One is the thickness of the glass block. Second, the angle of incidence. Third, the refractive index of glass. Now condition when there is no change in direction or deviation of the light ray. When this happens, when the angle of incidence at the boundary of the two medium is zero or it hits directly 90 degree, then it passes undeviated. Second case when there is no change is when the refractive index of the second medium is same as the first medium. If this medium has 1.33 and this medium also has a refractive index of 1.33, then also there is no change in direction. Now let's see what happens to speed, direction and wavelength of light due to refraction. First of all, due to change in speed of light, in passing from one medium to another, the direction of ray of light changes, right? So there is a 
change in direction due to refraction again when when the light travels in air it travels at a fast rate like the speed of light in air is 3 into 10 to the power 8 meter per second but in water the speed is less so due to refraction there is a change in speed now coming to wavelength first let's see what happens to frequency when light travels in air the frequency remains constant and when it travels through glass the frequency doesn't change so frequency doesn't change even when light travels from one medium to another medium so if frequency doesn't change let's see this speed of light in air is c so let's suppose c and what is speed speed is equal to frequency into wavelength we all know frequency doesn't change now again speed of light in glass is v frequency remains constant and the wavelength is different suppose lambda dash is the wavelength therefore c by v comes as f lambda by f lambda dash frequency remains same so i can cancel it out so c by v is equal to wavelength of light in air by wavelength of light in glass so what is the new wavelength it depends upon c by v is mu or the refractive index so new wavelength is original wavelength by refractive index so due to refraction the wavelength changes now factors affecting the refractive index of a medium what is refractive index refractive index is equal to speed of light in air by speed of light in that medium so if the speed of light in that medium is smaller if this quantity denominator is smaller then obviously the refractive index is higher so smaller the speed of light in that medium relative to air higher is the refractive index then with increase in temperature the speed of light of the medium increases with temperature increase the speed of light of this medium or denominator increases so what will happen to the refractive index the refractive index will decrease so with increase in temperature the refractive index decreases now color of wavelength of light the speed of light of all colors is same in air but in any other transparent medium the speed of light is different for different colors in a medium the speed of red light is maximum and that of violet light is least so refractive index of a medium is maximum for violet light and least for red light so wavelength of red light is more than of violet light so refractive index of a medium decreases with increase in wavelength now what is principle of reversibility the principle of, of reversibility of light states that the path of ray of light is reversible suppose let's see this example now it's traveling this ray of light AO is traveling from air to water. Now this is the angle of incidence and this is the refracted ray. Now suppose again if from water I will make the ray of light to travel to air then what path it will follow? It will take the same path. So according to this principle if a ray of light travels from A to B along a certain path it will follow exactly the same path while traveling from B to A. Using this principle of reversibility, we can write the refractive index of water to air is sin i by sin r. Similarly, refractive index of air with respect to water is sin r by sin i. So multiplying this, it becomes 1. So uh, suppose for example, the refractive index of glass with respect to air 
is given as 3 by 2. So easily we can find out the refracting index of air with respect to glass will be 2 by 3. So this is the principle of reversibility. Now multiple images in a thick plain glass plate or a thick mirror. Now suppose if a pin or a candle flame is placed at the front of a thick plain glass plate. As you can see here, this is a thick plain glass plate. MNLP. This is a thick glass plate and is viewed obliquely as shown in this figure. A number of images are seen. Out of these images, the second image is the brightest while others are of diminishing brightness. Why does this happen? Now suppose L, M, N, P represents a thick plane mirror of which N, P, N, P is the silvered surface or this bottom part is the silvered surface. An illuminated object A is kept in front of it as you can see here. Consider two rays, one falling normally on the mirror and the other AB falling obliquely on it. When the ray of light AB falls on the surface LM of the mirror, a top part of the mirror, a small part of light nearly 4% is reflected in the direction BP forming a faint virtual image at a1 while the larger part of light nearly 96% is refracted along BB dash inside the glass. The ray BB dash which strikes at B dash is now strongly reflected back by the silvered surface bottom one inside the glass as B dash C. This ray is then partially refracted along CQ in air and partially reflected as CC dash within the glass. The refracted ray CQ forms a virtual image A2. The image A2 is the brightest image because it is due to the light suffering a strong first reflection at the silvered surface bottom PN. Now the reflected ray CC dash further suffers multiple reflection at C dash, D and D dash within the thickness of the glass plate and refractions at D, E, F giving rise to multiple virtual images at A3, A4, A5 of gradually decreasing brightness. The second image is brightest of all as the minimum absorption takes place and it bounces off the silvery layers which makes the bottom surface. All successive images are formed due to multiple reflection and absorption and hence they are not so clear. Thank you for watching this video. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comment section below and if you like my video, Please subscribe to my channel and give a thumbs up.